Hey everybody, today Rotto previews a prototype of Red Outpost, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to this mysterious secret planet that has been occupied by Soviet Russia. Which may sound a little crazy, but here's the story. Uh, back in the late 60s, when America won the space race and got to the moon, that's only because Russia was never trying to get to the moon. They had their own secret objective. They built the mighty spaceship uh, Krasnya Zarya, and it flew much, much further to this previously unknown planet to start a new colony. Now, unfortunately, uh, the Krasnya Zarya crashed, and so the colony has lost contact with Earth, and that's why we never heard about it, and the Soviets just kind of, well, let's just not talk about uh, that ship. But they did survive, and they have made a thriving communist, communist community here on this planet where, you know, it's the state that owns the means of production and everybody is equal. How equal? Well, we're going to find out. This is a worker placement game, and I've already got the game set up here. As part of setup, three of the worker spots randomly are not going to be available in the morning phase, uh, which means they have limited access. And three different ones, again, chosen randomly, are not going to be uh, available in the nighttime or the evening phase. But otherwise, they're available during the day. So they're gonna be, uh, there's going to be slight restrictions there. There are six workers that we share control over in this competitive worker placement game. There is the miner, the shepherd, the farmer, the fisherman, the bureaucrat, and the commissar, or the commissar. And uh, everybody has a variable mood that we have to uh, worry about because if they do jobs that they like, their mood potentially increases. If they do jobs they don't like, their mood decreases. And why do we care about the mood of our workers as you know the uh, you know the, the managers of this colony? Well, every time we send one of these workers out to do a job, we have to mark that we were the one to do it. And at the end of the day, and this game takes place over two days, who Whoever issued the most orders to a given worker will either gain or lose points depending on their mood. So, in addition to a worker placement game, this is kind of a shifting area control game where we are exerting our influence over the proletariat uh, to our own ends. Right. And, uh... Let's get going. I am the first player. Oh, also I should say, uh, as part of setup, we each get two special power cards. One that is associated with one of the worker placement spots, and one that is associated with one of the worker types. So in this game, I especially like the miner, because I can push him harder than normal, so that he's even more unhappy after he's done working, but that means he can produce more goods than normal. But not coal. Uh, but he can produce more... Um, fleece, or wheat, or fish than normal. Wool, fleece, fish. And because I have a good contacts at the Palace of the Soviets, um, I can have a special action if I go to that worker placement spot that nobody else has access to. And I'm going to try and make use of those. Jen's special power is, well... She, if she deploys the farmer, she can break the worker placement rules and deploy the farmer to a location that is already occupied by somebody else if they're exhausted. And Jen, if she wants to, when she sends workers out to the pasture normally to collect wool, instead Jen can say, no, -uh, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to pet the animals and increase our happiness. So those are Jen's two special powers. Okay. I am the first player, and what am I going to do? I have access to all six workers because they are all up and at them, ready to go. And here we are in the morning of the first of two days, which again means these three spaces are off limits. So what am I going to do? I think I will start out and I will send the... Hmm. Well... I, I, I do want to generate goods. Uh, that is an important element of this game. I'm going to go on ahead and take the miner. Uh, cute little miner meeple there. And I should say, these meeples that came with this, these wooden meeples, are so detailed. Look at this. They've even got that little Soviet star. I don't know how they did that. With this. Now, I should say, this is a prototype. Uh, if you want, you can check out the Kickstarter page to go see what the final components are. But i got to say, this prototype already looks amazing. But anyway, I'm going to take the miner. And, ideally, the miner would prefer to work 
in the mine over here. Because he's the only character that if we send him to work in the mine, he will not be miserable. If I sent, I mean, and this is showing here, that working in the mine is terrible, it makes that person lose two mood unless they are the miner. So if I had sent anybody else here to mine, their mood would drop by two because it's such back-breaking labor. But the miner, he loves it! So it, it doesn't make his mood improve, but it doesn't drop. And now, when he comes to the mine, he generates two coal. Anybody else who would have been set here would only generate one. So it is an ideal place for him to go. So I'm going to come over here. And, all right, his mood doesn't change. It just stays steady. But I put my first marker on here to indicate that at the end of the day, maybe I will have issued the most orders to the miner, and therefore I will be responsible for his mood, i.e. I'll score victory points. So his mood doesn't change at all, and we generate two coal. Now, uh, there's a couple things that happen every time you generate resources. One, uh, that's the glorious thing we can do to push our colony forward, is generate resources. So, because I've generated two, I will move forward one, two spaces on the resource track. And after I've gone all the way around it, I will score two victory points and another crystal. All right, and I, everybody started with one crystal, and those have different uses. So I'm on my way, but here's the thing. I generated the cubes. I don't keep them. They go into the common storehouse because we are a communist society, and everybody shares in the spoils of the state. So it goes to this central thing where everybody potentially has access to this coal. All right. And that was my turn. I did a worker placement. Oh, and by the way, the miner is lying down. That means two things. He is exhausted. He can't do anything else for this phase, which is the morning phase. And nobody else can go here because this space is now occupied. Now, Jen does have a rule breaker. If she wants, she could send the farmer to that space because the farmer can break the rule and basically copy the action that somebody else has done in a given phase. If somebody else is lying down, the farmer can do that action as well. So, that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. And so, yeah, like I said, if Jen wanted to, she could send the farmer over here, totally breaking the rules. And that would be interesting, actually. Because now that I have generated two coal, um, what we're trying to do is we want to build up as many resources as possible you know, to contribute to the common good. And every time we have a total of three of them, whoever produced the third one that went into the storehouse, all of those three get removed from the storehouse and one of them gets moved over here into the export track. And whoever triggered that scores one victory point the first time. And then uh, in future turns, they could score two points if uh, if the sixth coal gets stored, and three points if the next coal. And this is not a huge high-scoring game. So that can add up pretty quickly. And so here's the thing. Jen could say, hey, you know what? It's going to make this farmer miserable because only the miner likes to work in the mine, but Jen could do it. And Jen would then produce a third coal, and she would be the first to export coal. So Jen could do that, but that means she would have to, um, you know, be responsible for the fact that the farmer has really dropped in overall happiness. And that's potentially going to lose Jen points at the end of the turn. Now it's possible over the course of the day, I might give more orders to the farmer. Because at the end of the day, whoever's issued the most is going to get the benefit of a happy worker or the penalty of a miserable worker. So that is something Jen could do because I have created this opportunity for her. And this is, and you have to go to the mine to get coal. That's not entirely true. There are, there's one other way we could get coal. In the crash site, there is still there are still resources to be found here. So if Jen wants, she could send any of these workers over to the crash site, and that means she would search through the ship. She'd draw one card. There are 12 cards. Two of them are failures, which means she won't find anything. But it's very likely she will find resources, a resource of her choosing. Or there's one of the failures. Or a resource of her choosing, and she'd get a crystal. Or a wheat and a crystal. Or a fish and a crystal. And so on. So, there, it's likely Jen could find, a th potentially, a third coal that way and store it, which means she'd score. And whoever, it's, it's not as bad a job to go search through the old wreckage. You only lose one happiness. So, Jen could trigger that if she wants. But, there's something else Jen could do as well. 
Instead of contributing to the common good over here, Jen could pick any worker. Let's say, oh, I don't know. Hmm. Let's say Jen were to pick the the ooh, yeah the the commissar. Let's say Jen picks the commissar here, the red player. She's going to send it over here to the storehouse. Now, what happens? Jen has a choice. She can either spend one of her crystals, these powerful thing, these useful things, to add the any resource she wants. Basically. At the storehouse, if you send a worker there, any uh, you could give up a crystal to put in, uh, any resource you want. So Jen could convert her the only possession she has in this society. These crystals, she could convert that into coal and um, you know trigger the export action and score a point. Or, as you'll notice, Jen could do something completely different. Um, in this perfect communist society, sometimes uh, people's baser instincts win out over the common good. You can come to the storehouse and steal goods that are here. If you steal a good, you can basically sell that on the black market to get a crystal. Or if you steal a good and keep it for yourself, that means you can increase the happiness of one uh, worker and decrease the happiness of another worker. So, that is all very, very interesting, and I think that's what Jen's going to do. Now, first of all, Jen Marks, she currently is in charge of the Commissar. She is responsible. This is her first action. Jen has come here, and while she could contribute her crystal to the common good, she's not going to. She is going to steal, and that means we are now further away from meeting our export goals. All right, so this just goes back in the supply. You know, it gets, you know, disappears on the black market. So Jen can get a second crystal, or she can change happiness up and down of anybody, and I think that's what Jen's going to do. Jen is going to improve the happiness of the Commissar, who she has a vested interest in. And because... Uh, see. Oh, who did I do? Oh, yeah. Uh, because so far... Oh, I forgot to mention. Folks, always watch with click on subtitles turned on. When I um, triggered the, the miner, I had to mark that I was the one who gave him that order. So Jen is going to make that miner a little bit less happy. So if at the end of the day, I'm in control of the miner, I'm going to lose points. Or a point. Right. So that was that. And so half of my work is gone. And the, um, uh, but, but, you know, uh, say la vie. Uh, it's, uh, I, I still don't mind because, hey, I did get the recognition for generating goods. And if I, once I generate one, two more goods, I will get two crystals and two victory points on this little track. All right. So that was Jen's first turn. All right. It is now, um, the end. It is now the end of morning because morning, lunchtime, and evening are special phases in that each player only gets to do one worker placement during um, the day in the uh, you know the daytime and in the afternoon. You know, so at daybreak we only get to do one. Then during the morning and during the afternoon we each get to activate. All of the characters will activate, but morning is over with only these two having activated. And whichever character got to sleep in these four characters down here, who you know we haven't invested in at all, each one of them increases their happiness by one. This is a special thing that happens at daybreak every day. So the fisher is happier because he got to lie in. The shepherd is happier. The farmer is happier. And the um, bureaucrat is happier. So, so far, everybody's happy in our communist paradise, except for the miner who got short-shifted. He's so upset because all that work he did, all, you know, just disappeared. Go figure. All right, sometimes, uh, you know, that happens in a bureaucracy. So, uh, that was the end of the morning. Now, every time we move to another phase, the first player marker changes hands. So, Jen is actually going to get to do two actions in a row, since we're playing a two-player game. And now we are in daytime. And at the beginning of every phase, uh, all the characters stay where they are, but they all stand back up. So they are ready to go again, and Jen gets first dibs. And what is she going to do next? Um, oh, one more thing, of course. The, the daylight is over, so these spaces... Oh, shoot! Shoot, shoot, shoot! Jen couldn't come here because this was blocked. You know what? Um, I don't want to rewind. Let's just say randomly it was the fields that had been blocked as part of setup. It's totally random. You draw cards. So I, I should have been paying attention. It was not legal for Jen to send this here, but we'll just say I did because this was the place that was blocked right from the get-go. Sorry, folks. Again, clean on subtitles. Okay, so it's morning, and now those places that were blocked for the daybreak phase, are now open for business. We can go to any worker placement space we want, except 
for um, this place, which we can only go to at lunchtime. So each day, only one player can potentially go here. So where is Jen going to go? So she can activate these workers. But I think Jen is going to bring out the bureaucrat, the gray player. And Jen is going to send the bureaucrat over to um, the, oh, what do you call it? It's uh, the It's like the town hall. It's in the administration building. So the administration building is now blocked. Nobody else can go there. And the action when you come to administration is, well, first of all, if it is, uh, you know, first of all, you'll notice um, the mood doesn't change. Unlike coming over here to the mine where the mood changed because it was backbreaking labor, uh, you know, it doesn't increase or decrease the mood to come to the administration building. But the bureaucrat loves it here because they get paid. Uh, or And so, which is to say, they get a crystal. If any other character had been sent here, well, there would be no crystal because the bureaucrat is the one who uh, really thrives in the administrative building. Oh, and by the way, let's not forget, Jen has to mark that she has issued an order for the bureaucrat. Okay, so Jen came here. And that was it. Jen just got one um, crystal, but these crystals are super valuable. Uh, they're worth half a point if you still have them at the end of the game, but you can use them for various things. Well, like you saw, you can convert them into any resource you want, uh, but there are other things you can do with them as well. So Jen came here, and now she's got, she's got two. The uh, commissar, uh, the commissar, and the uh, bureaucrat, and they're both happy. And so Jen wants to keep them both happy, and she wants to stay in charge of these two. She wants me to stay away from them. Now, here's an interesting thing. If any other character had come here, then what would have happened is, well, the bureaucrat, wherever they were, would have been very, very happy. The mood of the bureaucrat would have increased by one, and that the player who did this would have been allowed to move one of these little order issues uh, belonging to another player to a different character. So you can manipulate the area control that's going on over here with this action. But that's if anybody other than the bureaucrat goes there. The bureaucrat goes there, all they do is they just line their pockets and get a little bit of crystals. But if anybody else goes to administration, it's the opportunity to refile papers and move around who did what where and kind of change history. All right. So that was Jen's first action, and now this space is blocked. All right, and it is my turn. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use one of these last workers. I can go any place except the, uh, you know, the the lunchtime spot. And well, if I'm going to stay in charge of this miner, I would like to improve his mood. But I think because of what Jen did, because Jen made him a bit more miserable, I can actually take advantage of this. I am going to issue another order to him, right? Which means I'm getting closer. It's going to be tougher for Jen if Jen ever wanted to, to take control away. But, you know, you why would I want to have control of him? Right now, he's so miserable. Um, but this is going to be pretty cool. I am actually... Going, well, first of all, he can't come here. This is He can't go to the same place. He's got to go someplace new. I am going to send him to the... Um, to the fields. All right. And now, any character who goes to the fields, it's hard work, just like it was hard work at the mine. And the mine is the hardest work. Uh, everybody except for the miner coming here loses two happiness. Anybody except for the farmer coming to the field loses one happiness. So you might think, well, why am I doing this? Well, I'm coming over here. He's lost one happiness. He cannot get any more miserable than he currently is. All right. Um, and he is going to create one wheat which goes into storage, which means I'm getting closer to hitting that goal. But here's the thing. Remember my secret power? If I deploy the miner to a goods generating place, I can push him harder, make him even more miserable. But the thing is, he can't get any more miserable. So I'm not having to pay the penalty of a double misery. And yet he overproduces. He is going to produce a second wheat. And just like that, boom! I have made it all the way around, which scores me two points, and I just got uh, a, another crystal. Right. Cool. Okay, I'm very happy about that. And um, although, see, here's the thing. He's so miserable now, and I'm probably going to be responsible for him. I want to spend the rest of this day, and I still have a few more phases, improving his mood. So it'll go, at least go back to zero, because currently I'm going to lose two points off of this guy. But hey, I made two points off of all the labor he's done and some crystals. So uh, thanks to my special power. All right, Jen's turn. All righty. So she can't do these. She, she's going to activate another worker. 
who is she going to activate next? I think Jen's got a couple of crystals now. Jen is going to send a... Uh, I say, don't forget, Jen, if she sends the farmer, the farmer could come here or here because Jen's got the special power of the farmer being able to duplicate somebody else's action. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Jen is now going to send the farmer here. Breaking the normal rule, but her special power allows her to go to an already occupied space, but only if the other person was already done working. So Jen's coming here. And uh, that means Jen is now started to exert influence on this very happy farmer. And because the farmer is not the bureaucrat, Jen doesn't get the, uh, what do you call it, the, the crystal. Instead, um, Jen gets to improve the, the bureaucrat. Is so happy somebody came to do some administration. The bureaucrat improves her mood, which Jen is very happy about because Jen is in charge of all three of these characters. And Jen now gets to change. She gets to move these chips around however she wants. Now, she can't move her own. She has to move one of mine. So... I think what she will do is, she will say, hey, you know what? She might want to control the, uh, wait a minute, why have, I haven't, nobody's activated the fisherman yet. Why is this here? I must have done this as an example. Hmm. All right. Yeah, because, is that right? I've just done my second action, haven't I? Yes. So this must have been earlier when I was uh, doing an example or something like that. Yeah, because Jen's just now doing her third action. All right, so Jen could basically move uh, one of mine, which... Isn't really that great because uh, all Jen can do is basically give me control. Actually, this is not really a good time to do that. Hold on a second. Jen will save that for later. Uh, um, because sooner or later, I'm going to start trying to muscle in on characters she wants. That's when she'll move her in and then use that power to muscle back out. Yeah, I, I, th I thought Jen was going to move this fisherman, but I, that was not supposed to be there. Again, that was a mistake from when I was doing examples, I believe. Again, Klingon subtitles are your friends. So, Jen could uh, make the Commissar go, which means the Commissar will get happier and Jen will like, uh, try and maintain control. Well, I mean, it depends. The Commissar will be happier depending on where they're sent. If the Commissar is sent to the mind, the Commissar will be very miserable, as an example. I think, though... Um, so, we've got... This is another opportunity as well. Uh, to Wheat, Jen could copy, again, using her special power, because in, nobody else would be able to come here and grab Wheat, but Jen could. Instead of copying this power, Jen could come here, um, and the farmer doesn't mind farming, so the farmer's mood wouldn't change, it wouldn't go down, and then Jen would deliver the Wheat and get an extra point for doing the... Uh, so that's a cool idea, too. Because here's the thing, Jen know I know that this is Jen's special power. I probably should use this to keep her from accessing her special power, so Jen should use this character as soon as possible. But the longer she waits, the more options she has, because this could copy an existing action. So is Jen going to do that, or is Jen going to do something else? Let's see, Jen's got the Shepherd. Now ideally, the Shepherd would like to come up here and um, generate some wool. And if any other character besides the Shepherd did this work, they would get miserable, but the Shepherd is happy enough to do it. Although, remember, Jen's got that other special power as well. I think that's what Jen's going to do. Jen is going to be the first to issue an order to the Shepherd, tells the Shepherd to come up here. And so the Shepherd's mood... No, well, normally, coming up here means anybody other than the Shepherd, their mood would drop, They we would generate some wool. But Jen says, no, that's not what's going to happen. Jen is going to say, ignore the normal rules of the flock, and instead, just go out and get happy. Frolic with the animals. Pet them, feed them, have a nice morning doing that. Which means the shepherd, boom, boom, has just screamed up. A couple more steps, and the shepherd will be at maximum happiness and be worth four points at the end of the day. And currently, Jen controls that shepherd. So, that was that. Okay, so, uh, now it is my turn again. i still got the Commissar. Or the Commissar. Jen keeps... I don't know why I keep pronouncing it Commissar. Apparently it's Commissar. Commissar's in town. Oh, uh oh I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so I can go fishing, which would be the ideal use of the fisherman. I, I've got this farmer, although the ideal use for the farmer is now blocked. See, if I wanted to use the farmer, that would be the main reason I would use it to come over here. But Jen is now kind of take... Or I'm sorry, no. Come over here, but I've taken that offline. Uh, what the heck? I've, I've just been producing like crazy. Let's go on ahead and produce some more. I'll just use the fisherman in his correct location. And now, 
Um, right, so, so so far nobody has issued an order to the farmer. I'm doing the fisherman, and we get to do this action down here. We get to go fishing, and there is a little bit of luck involved, as you might imagine. In this fishing pile, there are six cards. Three of them are failure. So every time you go fishing, you've got a 50-50 chance of totally failing. And the other cards have uh, catch a single fish, or two fish, and get happier, or a single fish. So, here's the trick. First of all, if anybody comes here other than the fisherman, their mood would drop. The fisherman is perfectly happy to sit here for hours just staring at the water, waiting to catch fish. Everybody else hates the job. So, the other thing is, if the fisherman comes here, they get to draw two cards instead of one. So he doubles his chances of being successful at fishing. So let's see what we got. Bippity, skippity. Whoa! 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 What the heck? All right, well, that did not work out. I was hoping I'd at least catch one fish, put it in storage, and continue to, um, you know, uh, reap the benefits. But wow, and now that means it is a good time to go fishing because there is only a 25% chance. There's a 25% chance of getting the best double haul and only a 1 in 4 chance of getting another failure. Wow! Oh, that is no fair! But say la vie. You know what? Sometimes you go fishing and the fish just aren't biting. Um... Still, I've got control of him, and he is happy, so he's worth points to me, but I missed out on that. That is Le Bamer. Okay, so that was my turn. It is Jen's turn again, because we're going to keep going during this morning phase until all the workers have done an action. So Jen can either use the commissar or she can use the uh, fisher person, and so she is going to use the fisher person now. And again... Well, uh, Jen could send... I mean, if it were me using the fish person, I could send it to the mine and r ruin their mood, which would not be good if I had just taken control of them. Or we could come to the work camp, which is also a very miserable place, negative two happiness, but produce one of every good except for coal. Which means if Jen sent over here, well, she would uh, be the first to actually export stuff. But I think Jen is going to use her power in copy. So, um, she could finish, like I said, she could finish the weed I was talking about, or she could now, now that I've issued more orders, it makes sense for Jen to come here. Yeah, Jen's going to do what she was thinking about earlier. She's going to come here copying, which means, um, you know, the mood of the uh, farmer doesn't change, but that's okay, it's already kind of up there. And it means the commissar does improve in mood, or I'm sorry, not the commissar, the the bureaucrat, because the bureaucrat's got a friend. Although it would have happened no matter where the bureaucrat was. The bureaucrat is just good that it's good that administration is being used. And Jen can move something around. Jen's just going to get me off the fisherman and make me triple down on the most miserable character in the game. Um, which means Jen is currently has control of four happy people. I've got control of one miserable person. All right, so that was that. And now it's my last turn. I guess I'm going to use the commissar, which means we have our first battle for control. Uh, if at the end of the day we are tied, everybody gains or loses the points. So I'm going to send this uh, commissar any place except here. Can't or can't go there. Can't go to the special lunch galley. Cannot go to the barracks because you can only do that at nighttime. So where and also obviously a lot of places are blocked. So where am I going to go next? Um, let's see. Well. One place I don't want to go, the one place the Commissar doesn't want to go, up here we have the Palace of the Soviets, which is incomplete. We're still building it. And so we can send workers there to contribute our crystals, our only private property, towards the greater good. And because whoever does the most gets four points at the end of the game. Second most, two points. Third place, one point. So the problem is sending the Commissar here, sending anybody else to contribute to the, the great glory of, uh, of the Soviet Union, well, it will improve their mood. Sending the Commissar here, the Commissar does not like to do this. So, uh, the Commissar would actually drop in mood. But there's another interesting thing. If any other character comes here, the Commissar is, the commissar is happy to see that the work is, and so that, uh, the Commissar, wherever they are, will improve their mood. So I'm not going to come over here. But um, you know, now that I have a vested interest in the Commissar, I want to send other characters over here so the Commissar will get happy and the character I send there will get happy, but at the expense of my precious crystals. So in the meantime, where's the Commissar going to go? Well, there's one other really cool place to go, which unfortunately, again, the Commissar doesn't want to go to, and that is the Beer Hall. 
If any other character besides the Commissar comes to the Beer Hall, their happiness immediately improves by two. The Commissar does not approve. And so, if I send the Commissar here, we'll drop in happiness. Um, which is not good, as you might imagine. And so, coming here just gets you the happiness, and if you want to spend a crystal, you can get make somebody even happier and make somebody sadder, no doubt, because you're, uh, you know, you're, you're talking trash about them down at the beer hall. So that is another option I've got with the Commissar, but I don't know that I like that, because that is, these two places are the worst spots for the Commissar to go. Of course, it's not great to come and work in the mine, because the Commissar's mood will drop. The same for the work camp. So... I think, now that I have a vested interest in the Commissar's mood and overall, I'm going to send the Commissar to come search through the wreckage of the ship. Now, that means, unfortunately, uh, her mood drops by one, but that's okay. It's not gone into negatives yet. And still, I don't even know if I'm going to control her at the end of the round. And she gets to draw a card. And this means, unless I have... I mean, this was so epically bad luck, I have a one in six chance of drawing a fail out of this. I don't feel like that's going to happen. I feel like I'm going to find something good. Let's do it. I found... All right, I found something very nice. Very nice indeed. I found a crystal and some coal. That's kind of a bummer. I was hoping I'd get one of the question mark ones, because then I would have taken the third grain, and that meant we could have exported and I would have gotten a point. But still, I'm happy with this. All right, so this is out of the game. And uh, her, you know, her, she, her, her mood dropped a little bit, but we got some good stuff. And uh, we're very, very close to exporting coal and grain now. Unless, of course, somebody comes over here and steals it, uh, which somebody might be inclined to do. And uh, because I generated another good, boom. I'm about to make my set. I'm working on my second trip. Jen hasn't produced anything yet. Whereas me, I'm definitely producing. Um, but on the flip side, Jen seems to be having more control over people. All right. So we have finished the uh, morning phase. It is now lunchtime. And remember, at the beginning of every phase, everybody stands up so all the workers are available again. The first player marker switches, you know, goes clockwise around the table like a, like a normal game. And so it's my turn. And during lunchtime, worker placement is the same, but with one addition, any one character can come and get some grub here, which will improve their mood by one and nothing else. This is the only time during the day. And since I'm first, I have the option to do that if I want. I can improve the mood of anybody, plus I would be exerting more influence on them. So, like, it might make sense for me to say, hey, I'm just going to have the Commissar come over here. The mood goes up, and now I'm in control, baby. And remember, as I start donating these crystals towards building the palace, the Commissar's mood will improve even more. So let's say I'm going to go for that. Boom. All righty. I'm pretty happy with that. And now it is Jen's turn. And like the uh, Break of Dawn, where we each only got to do one action, the same thing happens at lunch. So Jen just gets to do one, an action with one of the remaining. And again... Jen's the only player to do this. Jen could use her special farmer power and break the rule and come here and make the farmer happier. Does Jen want to do that? What does Jen want to do? Let's see here. Or, hey, we could uh, go th uh, thieving again. Or, no, no, no. I think Jen, Jen is going to use the miner. Which, which is a problem, because that means Jen is getting it. But, you know, Jen, I'm clearly responsible for this miner's well-being. Jen just has contributed a little bit. Um, so, anyway, coming over here. And remember, his mood doesn't change. He likes mining. Going to generate two coal. Which means Jen finally starts producing. Hooray. And uh, th th once you hit three, boom, it comes over here. We've exported some coal. Jen got a point. Yeehaw! All right. And now the next time we uh, export coal, it'll be worth two points and then three points. So uh, that was that. And the thing is, it didn't hurt Jen to do it because I'm still the one responsible for this negative two points. Whereas Jen got a um, got closer to you know hitting a production goal and all that. All right. So like I said, lunchtime is a quickie. Everybody only gets one turn. So we are now moving on to the afternoon. And Jen will be first again in a two-player game. There's often getting to do uh, two turns in a row. All right, so everybody gets back up. And uh, now everything is wide open. And where is Jen going to go? Uh, yeah, Jen would certainly... Jen would need to produce one, two more things to come up there. And so the, the, the Commissar is getting interesting. Jen's not excited about this because Jen's got crystals. She was going to start contributing them, but contributing over here is going to make the Commissar happier, which currently benefits me because I'm in the lead there. 
But the Commissar is up. Jen could, uh, you know, issue an order to that, which means we would once again be tied for control of the Commissar. So that's interesting. Or, 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 or. See, nobody can come to the administration building. Or, hey, how about Jen... Hmm... That's an interesting thing. I was going to say, Jen could send the farmer over here and generate grain and export grain based off the... But why do that? Because she'd be wasting her special power? That's an interesting thing. Jen could send the miner over here, which means he'd try to get more miserable, except he can't get any more miserable. And Jen would still not be responsible for this misery because I've ordered him around more, and that would produce the grain. Yeah, Jen's going to do that. Boom. Okay, Jen's playing a risky game here because it's getting close to where we are both responsible, but still, I'm in the lead for responsibility. I'm on the hook for that negative two. So Jen's going to come over here and have the, the miner, who is not happy to be there, generate one grain. So Jen's getting closer, and hey, that was three grain built up, which means Jen gets another point. And the miner is offline. So my character, who can do a cool special power, is offline until the night phase. Okay. So that wasn't cool. Not cool at all. It's my turn now. So, and you know, the, the we're, we're getting close to the end. I mean, and this game takes place over two days. It's a pretty quick game. Now I'm gonna keep going until I finish the first day, so you can see how you know the scoring and whatnot works. But I need to think about what do I want to do now. Well, I I would like to continue producing, but my miner who produces double. I, do I, 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 I can't send the shepherd here because he's already here. I can't send anybody over there. I can't send anybody over here because all these spaces are blocked by characters who are standing around. But, 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 chicken butt. Uh, if I want to, maybe I should just go on ahead and triple down on this commissar. Ah, uh, but no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am going to. Um, wait a minute. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. Folks, cling on subtitles. I forgot. I should... Oh, wait, no, that's right. I did do the fisherman, but Jen moved it over there. I'm going to control the fisherman again. And I'm going to send the fisherman and say, Hey, you did a terrible job fishing. You're clearly the worst fisherman ever. Why don't you go and contribute to the glory of the Soviet Union? And, um, right. So, coming here means uh, any character who comes here and does that implicitly gets happier. Except for the Commissar. And the um, now I will give up one of my crystals, which means I'm in the lead to get four points at the end of the game for having contributed the most. And the Commissar, wherever they are, gets a little bit happier. And currently, Commissar is in my back pocket. The Fisherman is in my back pocket. Or, yeah, I, so that worked out pretty nicely. I'm pretty happy with that. It is Jen's turn again. And, and so this would be blocked. Nobody else could go there, but Jen could if she wants. Although, she's got a problem. Coming here makes the Commissar happier, which currently helps me. Jen is not happy about that. Hmm. Um. So what else could Jen do? Well, she could just do an action with the Commissar, and now we're tied. Who's going to control this Commissar at the end of the game? I don't know, but where's the Commissar going to go? Someplace happy, hopefully. Except, the only way to make the Commissar happy is by doing this. Mm. But all Jen will do, I mean, she, yeah, but that won't benefit. Jen can have the Commissar come over here and try to find some goods. That only makes the Commissar drop a little bit. Yeah, what the heck, Jen's going to do that. And, and yeah, so that's going to happen. So now we're tied for control over here. And Jen gets to draw, oh, and the Commissar drops one. Because it's hard work digging through, um, you know, the, the wreckage. And Jen finds, alrighty, another crystal and a uh, wool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Boom. Jen's pretty happy with that. So now she's still in it to win it. And it is uh, my turn. We've still got a bunch of folks standing up. Where am I going to go? What do I want to do? All right. See, it's interesting. If there were two fish and two wool here, I would definitely come over to the work camp because that would get a, a fish, a wool, and a grain, and boom, I would complete two at once. But right now, if I come over here, that just means there'll be two, and Jen could probably finish up the last little bit, and she would get another export bonus. Plus, I mean, so I, I don't want to do that. Although, again, I would move forward three, which would get me another two points and another crystal. Uh, let's see. And 
What else do I want? Currently, Jen's just sitting pretty at this two-point bureaucrat. Maybe I should have the bureaucrat do something. Because, I mean, right now, Jen's just got those two points completely uncontested. I'm not fond of that. Yeah, let's do let's do this thing. I'm going to say, hey, bureaucrat, you work for me now. Head on over and have a beer. Which means, boom, boom! Now the bureaucrat is suddenly worth three points. And while I'm here, I'm going to spend a crystal. And uh, that means I get to tell some tall tales. Somebody goes up, somebody goes down. And who is going to go up and who's going to go down? Well, Jen's got the... Uh, the um, the shepherd looking pretty good. What does Jen own free and clear? And and what do I own free and clear? I could, if, I, if I'm going to control this guy, maybe I just want to have my poor miner. Now at least he's negative one. So I've, I've effectively gained myself a point. So I'll, I'll make his mood go up. And who will I make go down? Probably somebody that I don't think I'm going to try and chase after. I'll make the shepherd go down. Because now, I mean, as you can see, the shepherd was close, was so close to crossing the two line to get to three points, but now he's come all the way back here, so we got to go up two points before he is worth anything more. So I pretty much, pretty much stopped Jen, I think. She's not going to have time to have the shepherd go up twice. Well, I mean, she could if the shepherd goes to the bar, but the bar is occupied. So that's offline. All righty. So, well, speaking of, it's Jen's turn. Right now, there are only two characters left, the farmer and the shepherd. And, uh, hmm, let's see, what does Jen want to do? She, I mean, she, she's still happy. She's getting some points off both these characters. And, and, and if she wants, she could have the shepherd come over here and steal some stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, and then change moods. Or she could, uh, you know, convert, you know, uh, uh, or, well, no, what she can't do is she cannot come here and contribute because this space is blocked. And so currently I'm in the lead and I can't do anything about that. Or, but yes, Jen could. Again, she could. She will use her special farmer power, come over there. Uh, nobody else could. And so, what does that mean? The farmer is very pleased with that. Good to be contributing. The commissar is very pleased, and we're both neck and neck on that. And, um, right, so neck and neck on that. And Jen gives up a crystal to have achieved that. So now we're tied for the four points. And Jen has kind of locked in, you know, much, cl more closely locked in a majority over there. Right, and so I've got one more move. And it's going to be this shepherd, which, and I have to do it. So, so suddenly now we're, we're competing all over the place. All right, and what am I going to do with this shepherd? Suddenly I care about him being happy. And I think, I think, I think, I think, I think what makes sense is to come back over here to the administration building, which means the shepherd does not go up or down, but the, uh, the bureaucrat, wherever they are, goes up one. So the bureaucrat has hit the ceiling four points. Currently, we're both going to get those four points. And, um, but it's not going to stay that way, folks, because remember, uh, when you come here, you get to shuffle the paperwork. So I can move any one of Jen's tokens. I think I will move this one and I'll say, hey, you know what? This is interesting. I could come here because she's already got that locked up. So this doesn't do her any good. Or I could come over here. And now that means um, we're both going to lose a point. Because we're tied on this. I'll do that. And we're both currently losing a point off of that. Phew! Okay, so that was the afternoon phase. A lot of stuff going on. We're going to move on to nighttime. I And I get to do two turns in a row because of that. Everybody gets back up. And one more important change. It is, not, it is nighttime now. So nobody can come to the administration building. So Jen cannot do a last minute switcheroo. And nobody can now come to the work camp, which nobody has done yet. Because this is, I mean, look at this. It's, it's like a gun tower and stuff like that. This is not the best place. Not the happiest place in our colony. And where's the other nighttime one? The other nighttime one is day, day. Oh, nobody can go and tend to the animals at night. All right. And so, I am first. And like uh, Daybreak and at lunchtime, each of us are only going to get to do one action. This is my last action for the round. And what do I want it to be? Let's see. I would... Well, I mean, I, I've got this free and clear. If I get another one over here, this is mine. And that's a two-pointer. This is a two-pointer. I'm holding on to this. 
But here's the thing. The one thing I don't want Jen to do, uh, if Jen does anything with the bureaucrat, then suddenly we'll be tied here. That's not going to happen. So whatever it's going to be, it's going to be something with the bureaucrat. Thereby locking in that sweet, sweet four points. And here's why I want to do something with the bureaucrat that makes them happy. Because, yeah, I could send them over here to the mine, but then I, that's two points I'm losing. Although it means I would be generating some goods and whatnot. Um, there is a special... In the same way at lunch, uh, it was the only opportunity you had to come over here and just get a little bit of happiness. The same thing happens at the end of the day. I could have the bureaucrat go do things and whatnot, but I'm going to have the bureaucrat just take it easy. Gets the night off, which can't increase the mood anymore, but it means I have pretty much locked in these four points. Boom. All right. And that was it. I am done for the day. Jen gets one more turn with one of the remaining characters. All right. So, what is going to be the best thing? If she does anything with the fisherman or with the... Uh, I mean, she will... Well, no. All right. So, currently, I'm going to get two points. If she does something with the fisherman, then we both get the two points. So, that nullifies that. Or she could get the third, so she gets the two points here. Um, or she could do the, you know, so Jen, she's going to do something that is going to lock in two points for her. So she should do that. What should she do? Something that will lock in two points for her. Um, well, she cannot contribute over here anymore because those spaces are blocked. She could just come, oh, wait, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right, Jen is going to have her favorite farm person come over here and get wasted. Because she had a tough day of doing all kinds of special stuff. Jen's just going to come over here. The farmer goes boom, boom, and just went from two to three points. And um, Jen has locked that in. And if Jen wants to, Jen will spend a crystal, this is an optional thing, to change the moods of two characters. So Jen will change the mood of a character to push all the way up to four and then push my special one down to three. So that was a uh, two-point transfer just like that. Ah! And I... Ah! So I could... Ah! All right. So anyway, the day is done. And at the end of every day, we've got to pay uh, based on how happy everybody is. So the minor. Well, we are equal control, so we both lose one point. The, we have equal control over the fisherman. We both gain two points. We have a Jen gets four points. One, two, three, four for um, being the only one. I get two points. One, two for being the only one over here. I get three points. One, two, three. And we both get two points. One, two. So at the end of all of that, um, you know, uh, you know uh, shucking and jiving and gyrations, I am one point ahead of Jen. We both have a half a point in crystals. We're tied over here. So it's a pretty close game at this point. Although, here's the thing. Jen just has to produce one thing to get two more points. So she's just a single action away from getting two points and another crystal, which is another half point, etc., etc. So anyway, so we've worked it all out. Then everybody's mood resets. Everybody goes back to the barracks, ready for work on the next day. We get all of our discs back. Bip, bop, flip, flop. If I could do that without dropping them all over the place. The player or order changes hands like normal. So Jen will be the first coming into the second day. And uh, once again, the nighttime spaces are no longer blocked. The morning spaces are... And Jen is first now, and we've got another day to, uh, you know, once again, start playing with the uh, the emotions of our workers and uh, start trying to contribute because this is a this is a vicious fight. But Jen definitely, above all else, she wants to produce because she just produces one more time. She gets two points, so she's really almost kind of in the lead and another crystal, and that'll be pretty good for her. And she's still got her special power. Um, so what is she gonna do? I don't know, folks. But I do think that should give you a pretty good idea of what Red Outpost is all about. And now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.